this is your checkout video for um, your crepe sashimi and your crepe pear. Okay, so these are kind of two skills lumped into one. As always, I have your checkoff sheet right here following step by step, okay? First thing, always perform those initial steps. Second step on this one, we're gonna prepare our patient. So we're gonna place the patient in a semi-fowler's position, which we are there right now, so we don't have to do anything. Um, we're gonna do a brief respiratory assessment. So we're gonna listen to lung sounds, we're gonna do an SpO2, and we're gonna do respiratory rate, okay? So you will need your stethoscope for this checkoff. So just, this is, I'm gonna show you how to listen to lung sounds. You'll learn this more in depth when you get to your physical assessment checkoff. But for now, you just need to know the basics. What you need to hear is, do they sound normal? Do they sound like there's adventitious sounds? You don't need to identify any of those because you haven't learned about those yet, but you will eventually. So we're gonna get the motions here as far as that goes. So here's your respiratory assessment. You're just gonna stick your stethoscope in your ears. You're gonna listen bilaterally. So one side and one spot, and then you're gonna move to the same spot, just on the opposite side. So you can compare left and right sounds, okay? So we're gonna listen here. We're gonna say, Mr. Smith, can you go ahead and take a deep breath for me? And they'll breathe in and out, and we'll listen to one full respiration, one full breath in, one full breath out. And then we'll say, Mr. Smith, every time I move my stethoscope, please take another breath in and out. And then we will move our stethoscope to this side. And then we will move down to this side and then this side and then down this way and then to this side. You cannot hear breath sounds over breast tissue. So make sure that you're avoiding breast tissue. Okay, and you go in this type of pattern all the way down, listening in at least 10 spots, okay? More over to the side here for your last spot. So number nine and then number 10 are kind of almost over to the very side of the patient. And so you listen to those and that's how you're gonna do your brief respiratory assessment coupled with an oxygen saturation as well as respiratory rate, okay? So you just need to verbalize those since you're gonna be doing this on a mannequin. So we've done our respiratory assessment. We're, gonna, we're going to then place a towel or a waterproof pad onto the patient's chest. Okay, and I have a towel here. You guys have linen savers and whatnot in your um, kit. If you'd rather use those, that's fine too. <clears throat> Then we're gonna prepare the equipment. So we're gonna ensure that we have the appropriate PPE. So for this, you would need to verbalize. You don't have to put it all on, but you do need to verbalize in your check off. I would wear a mask, I'd wear goggles, I'd wear a face shield, okay? This is the splash zone, as I like to say. Um, we're gonna ensure that there's emergency equipment at the bedside. So an Ambu bag, which is this. We're gonna make sure that there is um, oxygen, which is on the wall in the green, um, and we can, we can go over that in class. So you'll make sure that there's oxygen and then also making sure that there is an arbiturator, the same size or smaller, which is just something that if this trach were to pop out and there was absolutely nothing in this, these holes close back so quickly. And that's something we need to make sure that if that were to come out, we would have something to put in its place in an emergency. Okay, so that's super important. And we wanna make sure that it's the same size as the hole that's there um, or a size smaller and then make sure also we have suction equipment, which we do have on the wall and we're going to be using, okay? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and turn on our suction to continue a suction. We've got it turned on. We're going to um, test our suction by occluding the tubing and feeling suction pressure. Okay, we feel suction pressure here. I'm gonna turn this off because it gets kind of loud and I don't want you to have trouble hearing me during this video. Um, but we have our suction, we've tested it, it's on. Um, we're gonna place that su suction tubing in a convenient location for easy access. I like to place it right here on the pillow. Then we're gonna set up our suction kit here, okay? So you should have, these are the supplies you need for this check off, your suction catheter kit, and then also a tracheostomy care tray. These tend to look different every semester, but it's the, generally, uh, it's basically the same, but it might not look exactly like that. Okay, so those are what we need. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our suction kit. So we're gonna open this outer wrapping here. Two corners pull apart here. We're gonna open this. 
And what we see in here is just something very basic that looks like the same thing that holds your sterile gloves. That is true. However, there's some things in here that you need to be careful about. When you open this, and remember, we need to be wary about sterility. When you open this, tucked here in the side pocket, if you can see, tucked under there is a little cup. And this cup is meant to hold normal saline, okay? So we're gonna pick that cup out of the side and we wanna make sure that we, when we, we can pull, push each side to pop it open into a cup, okay? The top of it looks like this with plastic in it. The bottom is cardboard. We can only touch the sides. You cannot touch the inside of this plastic because that's where the sterile water is going to go, okay? You cannot put your fingers in there, so be very weary of that. Go ahead and set that over to the side here. And then there's also, once you open this all the way, so we'll go ahead and open this as if we're going to put on our sterile gloves here. We're gonna pretend that this is my saline bottle because I don't have a bottle of saline, but you will have one during your checkoff, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and open this as if it's our sterile glove. So we're gonna grab the outer one inch margin, make sure we pull it nice and tight here so that it doesn't flop back on itself. Only touching that one inch margin, just to be real whoopsie, careful about that. I'd get a new cup because that could totally contaminate if it gets into the top. So again, if you if something happens and you feel like you contaminated, make sure you just own up to it. Okay, we if you catch yourself, that's totally fine. Okay, so we've got this open here now. So what we're gonna do first is we've got this open. We're gonna pour our saline here first before, because the saline bottle is not sterile. So before we put our sterile gloves on, we're gonna grab this saline bottle, pour it in here, and then leave it be. We can even put it out of the way because we don't need it anymore. So now our bowl is full of saline and we've done it without our sterile gloves on because we don't wanna contaminate once we get them on by touching that dirty bottle, okay? So at this point, we're gonna don our sterile gloves here. So you guys will put these on how you know how, grabbing that cuff, mine are like a disaster, but. That's why it's important to practice before you um, come in because then your gloves look all nice and pretty. So, only touching the inside there, putting that on, slipping our four fingers into the cuff of the next one, and putting this one on, how we do. Only grabbing the, oh, and I ripped it so I'd get a new one, but anyway, you get the deal. These are not the best gloves in this kit for sure. Okay, so now we've got our sterile gloves on, okay? We're gonna pick up our suction catheter, which is packaged here in the side of our um, kit, right next to our gloves. I'm gonna get rid of this. I can touch the middle of this and still be sterile, so I'm gonna get rid of that. So we've got our suction catheter. We're gonna remove our tubing with, the do with our dominant hand, and we're gonna coil the tubing around our dominant hand so it's not loosely falling around, risking contamination always thinking in our minds sterile to sterile. So what that means is this whole suction catheter is sterile right now. So I'm going to wrap it all around my finger as I take it out so it doesn't flail all over everything. Okay, at that point. And then we've got it in our dominant hand, okay? So make yourself comfortable. I like to get a little more slack than that. There we go. Wrap it around my fingers like so just for now, and then I'll end up letting it go here in just a moment. But at this point, we're going to, um, you need to notice that one hand is going to be contaminated throughout this procedure and one hand is going to remain sterile. So the, the hand holding the catheter tubing always has to remain sterile, okay? So at the time that I take my non-dominant hand and I touch this suction tubing to connect it to here, this hand becomes dirty, okay? So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna connect it here, and that's gonna make this all have suction here, okay? And now what I wanna do is keep all of this tubing sterile, okay? Keeping this hand sterile that has the tubing, and then keeping this hand unsterile. <clears throat> okay, so now we're ready and prepared. Now, to work this suction, once we cover the hole here with our finger, that is what applies suction. When this hole is covered, it is suctioning. When we let go, it is not, okay? So we're gonna start our procedure at this point, okay? 
So we're gonna place um, the sterile suction catheter into the normal saline cup and apply suction to ensure that it's working. So we're gonna apply suction here. Yep, it's bubbling, so we know that it's working. And now we've lubricated the tip as well, okay? So before we do any suctioning of our patient, we need to hyper oxygenate them because this is like sticking a vacuum down someone's throat. And if we don't give them a little extra oxygen before we start, they might crash on us, okay? Remember, we can only touch dirty things with this hand that's already been contaminated. So I'm gonna grab my Ambu bag with this hand. I'm gonna move it over here and get it correctly placed. I'm gonna place this part right here on top of this and I'm gonna hyper oxygenate the patient. So <clears throat> hyper oxygenating, we wanna make sure um, that we're giving three to five breaths, okay? So we're gonna attach it there to the tracheostomy. One, two, three. And three to five breaths. You can verbally say that in your check off. Okay. So we're going to take that off, leave it there so we can have it later. And then we're going to use our sterile hand to insert the catheter quickly and gently into the trachea, no more than 15 centimeters. You can see the measurement on this um, catheter. You can see the measurement there. So no more than 15 centimeters. Do not apply suction when you go in. You only apply suction when you come out. So we go in with our finger off of this button, okay? Go in to 15 centimeters, okay? I'm in there, and then apply suction, swirl, and come out. And you'll see that you get a bunch of gunk in there when that happens, okay? Um, so that's how you do that suction. That is called one pass of suction to that patient. Never apply suction for longer than 15 seconds. Always allow the patient 30 seconds of rest between each suctioning pass. And you always, always, always hyper oxygenate in between. So if I was gonna go in and suction again, I would get my oxygen, attach it here, give three breaths. One, two, three. Take it off here. I want to make sure not to pull the trachea out or the, the uh, trach, tracheostomy out. And then you can go back down in 15 centimeters, applying suction as you come out like so. Okay? And then always limit your suctioning time total to five minutes. Okay? In between each pass, you want to lubricate with your normal saline. Go back in, lubricate, go back in. So keep that in mind that's what this is for and then you can kind of section whatever you get through the tubing so that it's not stuck in there affecting the suction at the end when the procedure is complete you're going to remove glo the glove from your dominant hand over the coiled catheter so i like to wrap it up in my hand like this pull it off and then take my gloves off like this and then just throw the whole thing in the trash okay and that's how you do the suctioning portion of this At the end um, of this procedure, we wanna obviously remove our gloves, remove our PPE, discard our equipment, and then we're gonna do an additional um, respiratory assessment. So we're gonna listen to their lung sounds again in all 10 places. We're gonna take an O2 sat. We're gonna check the respirations because that's gonna tell us, did the suctioning work, okay? After that, we're gonna document pre and post procedure respiratory assessment. We're gonna document the amount, color, and appearance of the secretions and how did the patient tolerate the procedure? Okay, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and go into trach care, okay? This is a very um, tedious skill because it, it requires a lot of which hand is clean, which hand is dirty type of thing, okay? So I need you to be very cognizant of watching which hand of mine is clean versus which hand is dirty and what I'm using in what order because that's how you're going to pass this check off by paying close attention to those things. Okay, first things first, preparing our patient, applying clean gloves to ourself. Got my clean gloves on. And then the first thing we're gonna do is remove the old dressing and then we're gonna discard our gloves and our dressing. So that's just pulling this dirty dressing off throwing it in the trash, throwing our gloves in the trash, okay? 
So next step, preparing the equipment, ensuring again that we have emergency equipment at the bedside, the ambu bag, oxygen, the arbitrator, the uh, suctioning equipment, all those things, okay? And then we're gonna have our saline bottle again, um, which we'll have in your checkoff. I don't have one at the moment, but we'll loosen the cap first of our saline bottle, okay? Saline bottle is loosened and they're waiting for us to be able to pour. Then we're gonna open our tracheostomy care kit and keep it sterile, okay? So I'm gonna open it from this corner all the way down. Okay, got that. And then we're going to um, remove the sterile gloves, place them off to the side, being careful not to touch the inside of that. So we've got those out. Um, we can use the sterile drape within our kit as a sterile field. Um, so removing it, being careful not to fan or shake it, only touching the outer one inch margin. And this is what I like to do. Just grab that corner here, fold it up so it doesn't flop on anything. Grabbing the corners like so. Again, looking to make sure your shiny side is down and then just very gently placing it on the table. I don't like when it hangs off the table. So try to make it very nice and neat and be very careful with everything that you touch. Now, at this point, um, we're gonna put on our sterile gloves. I'm not gonna put those on right now. I'm gonna just pretend that they're on. But do you see how full my tray is right now? If I were to put this sterile package that I've touched with my dirty hands all over this to put on my sterile gloves, I've contaminated. There's nowhere on this table that's a good spot to, for me to comfortably and appropriately put on sterile gloves. So I would move to another surface. You can do that in your checkoff. Don't feel like you have to do everything right here at the bedside table. So move to the bed or wherever to put on those gloves. It just remains sterile in that way. So I've got my sterile gloves on. I'm gonna throw these on just to simulate gloves, okay? So I've got my sterile gloves on at this point, okay? At this point, um, we're gonna remove all of our supplies from the kit and place them on our sterile field away from that outer one inch margin so we can maintain sterility. So I just grab everything and just kind of move it around in an organized fashion like so, okay? Um, at this point, we're going to um, fill one of the compartments with hydrogen peroxide and an additional, um, one, one of these compartments is gonna be with hydrogen peroxide. What I like to do, we usually don't open these during our checkoff, so I like to just tell the students, go ahead and put those like right here so that you know which one is the hydrogen peroxide and which one is the water. So you're gonna put your hydrogen peroxide in this one, okay? And then with your non-dominant hand, which is, remember, one hand's gonna be sterile for this procedure, your dominant hand, one hand's gonna be unsterile for this procedure. So with your dominant hand, you can remove the lid on that saline bottle that you loosened, you can take that saline bottle and you can pour it in that other compartment, okay? So we're gonna pour it there. Now we've contaminated this hand, okay? So this is our dirty hand, okay? At this point, this hand is non-sterile, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is clean that inner cannula. Using our non-sterile hand, our dirty hand, we're gonna take out this dirty cannula, okay? Dirty to dirty. Dirty, we're gonna take it, we're gonna loosen it, you lefty-loosey, and then you pull it out. This is what we're left with. We drop this into our hydrogen peroxide mixture here, right there, just drop it, okay? At this point, it's still dirty in there, okay? So at this point, we're gonna pick it up with our dirty hand after it's sat in there for a minute, and we're gonna, with our sterile hand, grab our brush like this, pick up our cannula with our dirty hand, and we're gonna brush and clean our area. This is all I'm doing. Brushing the cannula, cleaning it like so. Okay? Cleaning it, cleaning it. I'm going to get rid of this brush. Do not put this brush back on your sterile field. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't need it. So going in the trash. At this point, I'm going to take it to my water here, my sterile water, and just drop it in. Again, I was handling it with my dirty hand because it was dirty. Now that it's in this water and it's already been washed, now it's considered clean. So I'm gonna pick it up with my sterile hand, 
pick it up, get some of the water off of it so we don't put water in this guy's trachea. And then I'm going to place it right back in there, righty tighty, and now it's in and it's clean. Okay, that's how we handle that. <clears throat> the next step is to clean his stoma. That is the circle there that is the actual incision where the tracheostomy is placed, okay? So we need to clean that stoma. So first thing we're gonna dip our sterile cotton tipped applicators into the saline compartment. So we should have two of them. Got these two cotton tipped applicators. I'm gonna dip them into my saline compartment, okay? At this point, I'm also gonna wet two pieces of gauze into the saline, so one. Again, not touching anything with my dirty hand, okay? So two pieces of gauze into my saline also, okay? And then at this point, I'm gonna start cleaning, okay? So I'm gonna take my dirty hand and I'm gonna lift up this face plate so that I can see my stoma. You guys see the stoma that's under here? I'm gonna keep this face plate lifted so that I can see it, okay? I'm trying to get a good view for you so you guys can see it on your end. And then I'm gonna grab one of my cotton tipped applicators and I'm gonna do a half moon shape. Start from 12 o'clock, go down to six o'clock and then I'm gonna discard this, get rid of it. Do another one, start at 12 o'clock on the other side Go down to six o'clock, get rid of it, discard it. And then you can put this back, okay? Continuing on with our one clean hand, one dirty hand. With my clean hand, I'm gonna now grab a gauze sponge here, and this is to clean the top of the face plate here. I'm gonna just take one swipe to this side, discard it. I'm gonna take one swipe to this other side and discard it, and then I'm can dry it. So you can take one swipe with the dry one, dry it, take one swipe with the other dry one, dry off that face plate, and then you're good. Those are all clean. At this point, this procedure is no longer sterile, okay? So at this point, I can take this gauze and I can stick it right here underneath his face plate, or you can do this last if you want to. can't remember what your checkoff sheet says exactly, but Either way, it's totally fine. So you just stick it in there. And then now what we need to do is um, change those tracheostomy ties, okay? You will use, I will give you an additional Velcro tie to change, okay? So you don't need to use the shoestring thing that comes in your kit, but it's talking about these things off to the side. The most important thing to remember, to remember when you're doing this procedure is that if you undo both of these ties and this tracheostomy is sitting in here with no nothing to secure it to the patient and that patient coughs, that tracheostomy will fly right out. You're gonna have an airway that the patient doesn't have and it's a big, big problem. So always, always, always get in the habit of leaving, a, um, leaving one side secured while you're working with the other side. So for instance, I'm going to apply the a new tracheostomy tie right here on this side. And then I'm going to let go of this side. Always stabilizing. You see how my hand is on his faceplate holding it in? Constantly stabilizing that. I'm always stabilizing that because if I let go, it's a problem. It can cause a severe problem. So I just take this on the other side and I stick it in through this little hole here. And then I Velcro it, which some of these are like gigantic and some of them fit good. So it just kind of depends. You have to play with it, make it tighter or looser or whatever. But always the key here is just always making sure that you have one that is Either one of your hands is constantly stabilizing this here, or you have one side connected and you connect it, like you don't take off the other collar until the new one's on. There has to be some stabilizing to be done here, okay? Uh, <clears throat> at that point, your procedure's basically done. You put this four by four gauze in if you haven't already, and then you're gonna discard your supplies, do your final steps, and then you're gonna do your documentation, which is your site assessment. So when you looked at that stoma, did you see any pain, redness, warmth, swelling, drainage? Um, when you changed that inner cannula and trach dressing, um, 
mention in your charting that you did it with sterile technique and then talk about the patient's response to the procedure. And then you're done.